Today I want to talk to you about transitions in DaVinci Resolve. These are all just those little interactions from one clip to another clip. For instance, you could do things like have them dissolve, meaning one piece starts to slowly fade out as the second clip after it slowly fades in. Now DaVinci Resolve already has a bunch of these installed, and if you're on the edit page and you go up next to the media pool, make sure you have the effects tab enabled. And when you scroll down in the toolbox, the very first thing you'll see is video transitions. Now the studio version, the paid version, has a few more than the free version, but you'll always find all of those transitions right here. Let me grab a couple of video clips to help you understand exactly what you can do with these transitions and some of the things you wanna be aware of if they don't work the way you want them to. I'll download a few skateboarding clips that might be fun, and I'll drop a couple down into the timeline. Now, as you can see here, where these two clips meet, that's just a standard cut. And if I were to play through in my timeline, you'll see when those two change, it's just a quick cut to the next clip because I haven't told the software to do anything other than play one clip and where that switchover happens to the next clip, just start playing the next clip. Now, over here on the left, we have these transitions that we can add in. Now, the ones at the very top are called dissolve. Now, if I were to try to grab one of these dissolves, let's say the cross dissolve, all I'd need to do is left click on it, hold it and bring it into my timeline and drop it right on top of those two clips where they meet. Now, if you notice that transition isn't dropping in there, it's not allowing me to put it in there for some reason. There's actually a really obvious explanation as to why that happens. And let me show you in real time so you can understand. Dropping in a transition is basically like asking two different clips to do two things at once. Let me bring the second clip up to another track. You can fade in or fade out of a track by hovering on that little white marker in the upper left or upper right and pulling it over. So let's say I start fading in on the second clip and I start fading out on the first. If I were to do it that way, you would see as I play through, the first one starts to fade out while the second one fades in. Basically, I've manually created a transition that dissolves between the two. But as you saw, I had to take that second clip and bring it back because it needed the information to dissolve in from this point and dissolve out from the other footage from this point to the end. When I brought these into my timeline next to each other, they were complete. The first one here ended right at this point. There was no more information filmed after that last frame. And the second one was the same situation, but in reverse. This was the very first frame that was filmed. There is no more information in this footage before that point. So when I try to grab a cross dissolve and tell it to dissolve, I'm asking DaVinci Resolve in that transition to use information from the first footage all the way to this point and information from the second piece of footage all the way back to this point. So to get that transition to actually work, what I would need to do is actually pull this footage back to allow for those extra frames that it would need. And I would need to take the second piece of footage and pull it forward to allow for these other frames that you can see are highlighted in white. Now, when I bring them together, and I bring a cross dissolve in, you'll see that dissolve allows me to drop in place. And I can stretch it only as far as the information allows. If there were more information in the end and the beginning of these two clips, I would be able to stretch this cross dissolve even farther, but it'll only let me stretch it to as far as the information exists. I know that sounds complicated, but it really is just using the available information. And if resolve doesn't have information to do that dissolve, it can't perform that action. So if you ever have an issue where a transition isn't dropping in like you think it should, make sure that your two clips actually have information at the end and the beginning of each. More frames to work with. Now that I've dropped that cross dissolve in place, I'll put the playhead back and play through and you'll see what happens. It effectively does what I manually did before. It fades out of the first one and fades into the second one over the length of that span. Now there's all sorts of different transitions that come installed in DaVinci Resolve, but they're all fairly basic. And sometimes you might want some more advanced transitions. One great thing about the software is you can actually find extra templates and transitions from third parties and bring them in and use them inside of Resolve. That can save you a lot of time from actually having to build each transition inside of your timeline to do what you want it to do. Now today's sponsor Storyblocks actually has some templates and transitions that you can use in DaVinci Resolve 
So let me go find one and I'll show you how to install that into DaVinci Resolve. You know, one thing I really like about today's sponsor, Storyblocks, is that they offer unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. They really allow you to say goodbye to all that expensive pay per clip pricing that you might see from other companies. Once you're signed up and signed in, you can download as many different video clips, audio effects, templates for DaVinci Resolve, transitions, anything you might want to use. There's no limit on how many of those things you can download and use under your license. I'll leave a link down below where you can go check out Storyblocks yourself if you're interested. But I like this one right here, 80 plus dynamic transitions. Let me download that. Once that item is downloaded, we'll find it in folder. I'm going to choose to extract that. And once I've extracted it, you'll see there's different operations depending on which type of operating system, Mac or PC that I might have. I'm working with a PC, so let me click on this option. Now, this part can be a little tricky, so I wanna make sure I go slow enough so that anyone who's watching can follow along. Now, there are some situations where you can just hit a simple install button and things will install directly into DaVinci Resolve. But sometimes you have to know the file path of where to copy these new transitions to. These are all settings files. So the way to find those on a PC is like this. What you wanna do is go down to my PC, click on the Windows C option, and then you wanna open up the users folder. Choose the username that you're currently logged in under, and you're looking for a folder called app data. Now, if you do not see it, like I don't right now, go up to the view option, scroll down, choose show, and then choose hidden items. A lot of times that app data will be a hidden folder that won't be immediately available to you. And you just have to tell Windows that you'd like to be able to see it. Now click on app data, choose roaming, go down to black magic design, choose DaVinci Resolve, choose support, then scroll down to the fusion tab. I know this is a lot of steps, huh? And then go down to the settings folder. Once you're here, this is where you want to bring in all of those new transitions, those settings files that you've downloaded from Storyblocks or wherever you may have gotten your new transitions from. All you have to do at that point is open up your other folder that has all of your settings files in them, choose to select all, and you can drag those over into this settings folder. Now, the next time you restart DaVinci Resolve, all of those new transitions will be available to you below all of the other ones that came installed with DaVinci Resolve already. Now, if you actually want to use some of these, instead of having to drag each over and then look and see how it acts and see if that's the one you want, you can actually put your playhead right where those two pieces of footage come together, where the middle of the transition would be happening. And you can actually hover over the transition in the sidebar under the video transitions. Don't click anything, just move your mouse from left to right. It'll actually automatically show you what that would look like if you did bring it into your timeline. And if you find one that you do like that you think looks great, then just left click and hold, drag it over and put it right between those two pieces. Now, when you play your footage, that transition will be right there doing exactly what you wanted to do up in your preview window. When it comes to finding the right transition, one rule of thumb I try to use in my own projects is I never want the transition to be more memorable than the actual footage itself. It should just be a way to move from one thing to the next and do it in a way that makes a lot of sense with the action that they're already seeing on screen. So if you've just got some simple basic footage, often a simple dissolve is enough or just a push or a slight motion that doesn't distract from what the viewer should really be paying attention to, the content itself. If you want to learn more about how to edit YouTube videos using DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.